All right, you guys, I'm gonna to talk to you today about strawberries. I have been thoroughly impressed with this raised bed system that I have constructed with this door to actually uh, enable me to harvest strawberries anytime I want that are completely pest and critter free. Um, even from slugs, I've been able to prevent these strawberries from getting any damage whatsoever. So uh, we talked about this actually in the, in the spring and I wanna update you guys now in this video on this particular system, why it is so easy and why I think it's really one of the better ways to grow strawberries uh, in a backyard setting. I also wanna talk about how amazing these plants are doing since we've transplanted them in because I just put them in in the very early spring, really only about three months ago. So three months later, they have taken so well after digging them up, it's like nothing ever happened. I'm so shocked. They're putting out a lot of fruits. In fact, uh, not only is there a lot of fruits, but some of the fruits are getting some really good size to them, which really to me tells me that these strawberry plants are like magic. I mean, it's crazy that you can just dig them up, put them anywhere else, and they're just gonna perform the way that they have. It just, uh, it's kind of mind blowing. And then the last part of this video, I'm gonna take you guys over to the patio. We're gonna do a taste test because I'm growing two varieties here in this climate. Uh, one of which that I really have recommended to you guys a lot in other videos that we've done on strawberries. It's called the Mara de Bois. It's a French strawberry. Someone always asks for the spelling. If you go to, I think, Indiana Berry or Norse Farms, you'll find it there very cheaply. You can order yourself bare root plants for like 20 bucks and you can have like 25 bare root plants fill in a whole bed in one season and you guys can be growing these really amazingly fragrant, very tasty strawberries that a lot of you guys have come back to me over the years and said, Ross, thank you for that recommendation. Um, they really are as tasty as you say. And it's not just about the flavor, which we'll get to, it's also about the texture. They really do melt in your mouth. We have another variety called Rucker's Scarlet, which is growing underneath my peach espaillets here to my, uh, my right. And uh, we haven't had them for that long, but we've gotten enough to taste test over the years. And I really do believe they are a great choice for a June bearing strawberry uh, because of their flavor. And actually they're a bit firm and might even be a pretty good commercial variety. So we'll talk about that um, on the patio. But for now, let's talk about this raised bed. It's not even really a raised bed. I mean, it's only four inches off the ground. It's really not uh, anything special, but what's nice about having wood attached or on the bottom layer is that I can attach this door on top. And it's kind of how I think of it is like a screened door where on top of the door is an insect netting. It's a fleece, I'm sorry, it's a mesh netting um, that lasts for a very long time. It keeps out almost all insects. Uh, I don't have any insect damage whatsoever. And the nice thing once this is lying here like this is that nothing can get in or out. So there's no bird, there's no critters, there's no, even no slugs. Nothing is damaging these particular plants. When I'm done harvesting, I close the door. When I wanna harvest, I open the door. And I have myself a little bamboo stake here that just props the door open for me. Um, the other nice thing, someone really had commented on our, our last video that we did in the spring on this system, and someone was wondering, well, Ross, what about pollinators? If you want to pollinate these strawberries, how are you going to accomplish that? Because you really need to have um, bees get in here and access these plants. You can't have this netting over top that's going to prevent the bees from getting in. Uh, well, very simply, there's a window with these strawberry plants that there's flowers, and there's a window where there's fruit. So in that 30 to 45 day window in the early spring, you keep the door open, you let the bees come in. As soon as all the flowers are pollinated, which usually happens right before any of the fruits start to turn red and can be attacked potentially by birds and whatnot, you just close the door. So it was really a very streamlined process that didn't really require any specific change to this this method, it was just me coming out here and opening and closing the door whenever I felt it was necessary. And I wanna show you the plants because these Mara de Bois strawberries, as I said, we, we really did just put them in the ground 
not too long ago at all. It's only been three months and they really have taken off. There's a ton of strawberries and some of them have gotten some pretty good size, which I'll show you guys a whole bowl that I harvested yesterday. And then as of today, I could come out here and harvest probably another bowl. Um, I think of course they could probably get a bit more established. Maybe I, they could go for some food. Uh, it was really dry at the beginning of the spring and they, they did struggle a little bit with the fruit size. Once it rained, they started to really take off and put out larger fruits. I probably could even put down some wood chips on top of the soil to make sure that, you know, the strawberries are a bit cleaner. Everything's a bit nicer. It's hard to even see the strawberries in here, but I'm telling you, there's a pretty large harvest considering um, the circumstances. I was just absolutely shocked because if you dig up a plant, especially a perennial, and move it to a new location, it's just very shocking that you would even have success having fruit that year. You know, if I dug up my fig tree and moved it to a different location, it would just be, I don't know, I'd be lucky to get anything. So it's amazing, I think, that these strawberries just do so well after you dig them up. It's, it's really is, uh, been a new experience for me and quite mind-blowing in that sense. Here we actually have a bowl like I said, I harvested these guys yesterday. Let me get out of the sun. And this is pretty good. I mean, considering the, tra the transplant, last year I had more plants probably, more established plants, and I probably at this point, instead of having a half of a bowl here, I'd have the whole thing filled. And I'd have enough of them to make tons and tons of jam, which I still have, by the way, in the freezer. But some of these have got some pretty good size. Some of the more beautiful ones we ate yesterday. And they got, like I said, the Mar de Bois is a really special strawberry. In here, I also have some Rucker Scarlet that I have to find. But you can really tell the difference because the Rucker Scarlet is more elongated, whereas the Mar de Bois is a, a fatter, more round strawberry. Um, I've seen these Rucker Scarlet strawberries though get pretty big. So this is not really, I think, the best representation of size of either one of them. But nonetheless, what I'm really concerned about is the flavor and the texture of these guys. So let's taste some of the uh, Mar de Bois first. And I've always been impressed with this strawberry. It's always had a high reputation before I even came along and started promoting it in my videos, but uh, it really does have more of a wild strawberry, alpine strawberry flavor than any other strawberry I've had that wasn't an alpine. So, so good. And I ate it within like a second. There was no chewing required at all. It's like chocolate. It's so soft. And that's also kind of a problem with these strawberries. It's a good and a bad thing. When they're so soft like this, it's very easy for them to kind of rot on the plants or to start molding or for something to damage them or for even yourself to damage them. They don't last very long on the counter whatsoever. So I harvest these. By tomorrow, a lot of them are not gonna look very good. And even some of them don't look good right now because of just some of the damage they took um, on the plants. They start to ferment, they start to mold. It's just not good. Mm. It's so good. You really, if you have room for strawberries, you must grow this variety. It's just like a must do. Mm. They're, I, honestly, they're not, in, they're not as good as last year or years prior. I think the rain has been a lot, has had a lot to do with that. Either we've had too much rain or not enough rain. And uh, I think it's affected the fruit quality. Here's the Rucker Scarlet. There's a little spot there that's not so great, but. See, that one has more of a typical strawberry flavor, you know, that you would expect from a strawberry. 
the Moire de Bois is quite different and it's not really your straight strawberry flavor. It's, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of grape or wild berries mixed in with it. Let me try to find more of these uh, Rucker Scarlet. I think here's one. This one has definitely gone bad. Can't eat that. I need to wash some of these guys. If you don't have like wood chips underneath or straw underneath, here's a good one right here. Here's a Rucker Scarlet that should be perfectly ripe. It's very red. And that's really the difference maker, I think, for me with these strawberries. The darker the red color is, and all throughout, you know, the Rucker Scarlet especially will get red at the very, very bottom. If the bottom of it is white or yellow, it's not perfectly ripe. The strawberry ripens from the top down. So if you can get them perfectly ripe all the way through, even to the bottom, you're gonna have the best uh, flavor. That was good. So for me, it's a more firm strawberry. I think obviously it was bred more for commercial ability, so it, it probably has some good commercial potential to it. Um, I like the shape of them, I like the look of them. Um, I think it's probably, in all honesty, it's a nice difference between the two in that they have different flavors, they have different textures, they have different um, lasting ability. And for my money, I do, I really think the, uh, the Rucker Scarlet's a very good strawberry. I also would recommend Early Glow, which is really not too far behind the Rucker Scarlet. But yeah, so those are my thoughts there, guys. I hope that you, you got something out of this, you enjoyed this video, and now you're hopefully more encouraged to grow strawberries. They're like the easiest thing. There, there's no reason to ever buy them at the store, let's be honest. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care.